this is one of her strongest examples of how economic liberalization and political violence is really connected. She claims that the shock of the massacre at Tiananmen Square made economic shock therapy and liberalization possible because uh, when, when protesters who, in her version, protested against liberalization were massacred, then the Communist Party used that moment to, uh, to implement the most dramatic reforms yet and liberalize even further. This is a, really the whole story of, of what happened there upside down. It's, it's completely distorted. Uh, what happened was that people protested there because they wanted more freedom of speech, they wanted less corruption, they were protesting against the, um, the dictatorship of China. When that happened, as that happened, when students who were in most instances in favor of, of uh, more reform, both, econ both economic and political reforms, did that, well then many others also protested and joined in the demonstrations, including some people, some workers groups who thought that economic liberalization had gone too far in China. Uh, but Naomi Klein d does this little trick where she pretends that that element of the protest was really what all the protesters were, were uh, against. And in that case it's very strange that none of their complaints, they had lists of complaints, demands that they gave to the Chinese, uh, to the Chinese Communist Party. None of them included any sort of complaint about economic liberalization. So that's something that's only in Naomi Klein's head. And then what happened after the massacre was also the complete opposite of what Naomi Klein's claim, Klein claims. It was not that we had any rapid liberalization. For the first time since 1979, the reforms were stopped because the traditionalists in the Communist Party, they claimed that these protests, that's the result of liberalization. If you begin to open up society, people will do these strange things. So now we have to stop this. A lot of those people who ordered the massacre, they were on principle opposed to going to the free trade zones in, in the South because they really hated this liberalization. Now they stopped it completely. For three years, no liberalization took place uh, in China. So that was something, and, and the General Secretary Zhao, so who was uh, the big free marketeer in the party, he was even uh, uh, purged uh, and had to spend le the rest of his life in house arrest because he supported the demonstrators. He also wanted more democratic reforms. Now, those people were purged and uh, it took three years and the actions of the, the grand old man in the party, Deng Xiaoping, who was uh, in favor of, of economic liberalization, it took the fact that he went on a southern trip. He was 87 years old, but he saw that he had formally retired, but he saw that now all those economic reforms were threatened. So he went on a southern tour to try to get the support from governors, from workers, from business people there who saw the effect of the reforms. And uh, that wasn't reported on in the Chinese press because now the traditionalists were in power. But he managed to get that support, he managed to create a stronger coalition again. And only after that happened, Jiang Zemin and the rest of the party, they threw their weight behind Deng and the old economic reform program. And so it got started again, but three years after after the massacre. So it was not that the shock of the massacre made shock therapy possible. It almost destroyed the whole economic reform program. Then it got going again and that was an important thing that it got going again because that, that's the kind, that's the economic liberalization that have uh, lifted hundreds of millions of Chinese out of poverty, out of misery. Uh, the very thing that Naomi Klein claims that the free market reforms created.